So, in this chapter, we will learn about uh, gesture detection. So, to detect gesture, we have to be able to uh, detect touches. So, we have to implement the untouch event uh, method, and there are a few, uh, few actions that can be realized inside of this method. First of all, action done means I put my finger on the screen. Okay? So there is a finger is down on the screen. Then the finger can move on the screen. Then the finger can be up of, on the screen. Okay? This is one touch. Okay? And suppose that when my finger is on the screen moving and then I received an, a call my touch will be cancelled, okay? So this is touch cancel, action cancelled. And there are also two other uh, possibilities. I have one finger on the screen, and then I put another finger on the screen. In this case, we have to under action pointer down and action pointer up when I remove some touch, okay? This is how touches are uh, handled by Android. So you will have to do it by hand uh, if you want to do something. So let's have an example. The small example we can build is a drawing application. So this drawing application will just draw the different touches and moves that I do. And when I release my finger from the screen, nothing happened, okay? So I just define a new view. So here we also define how we can extend view, okay? So I define a class, which is draw canvas, which extends view. And this uh, class has two um, private parameters, private uh, fields, uh, which are paint and pass. Paint is the display. Pass is the latest pass I am building, okay? Uh, so first of all, I have a small constructor. Uh, this constructor only took two parameters and calls the reset uh, method. What does the reset method do? It builds a new pass. So, okay, this is the starting point of my application. I have to instantiate a new pass for my finger, okay? It's an empty one for now, but later it will be uh, added with other touches. I have to define a new paint, which is uh, where I can draw something, and I define a set of parameters for my painting, okay? I want the stroke style, and so on and so on. And then I call invalidate. The call of invalidate will force the redraw of my canvas, okay? And this will force to call the onDraw method, okay? Two times there is a little bug, okay? And now I have to handle the untouch event. So the untouch event grab a, an event which is a motion event. This motion event is composed of many parameters. Uh, the first one is x, y which is where that's, did something happen. And then I can ask for the action. What did happen? First of all, an action done. In this case, I have to move to this point. Otherwise, an action move. I have to draw a line from the latest known position to the current one. Otherwise, an action up. Nothing to do, okay? And once I have handled this touch event, I just have to call invalidate to force the redraw of my painting. Okay? So now we have defined a new component, and this new component can be accessed uh, programmatically. So now you can do set content view new canvas with this context and nulk for the parameters. Okay? Or you can use it in the GUI editor. Okay, to do that, you just have to declare your new component 
inside of the res values at .xml, saying that, hey, I have now a new component that you can use, which is draw canvas, and then you can do drag and drops inside of your editor to build a new view. OK? So this is for a single touch. If you want to handle multi-touch, uh, you have to handle pointer down and pointer up. And to do that, uh, you have to use the method get action masked with, and this action will provide you the information of what is the action w which is currently performed. And then you can detect the number of touch in progresses, which is get pointer count. And then you can manage the different touches uh, inside of your uh, application. You have to manage these touches by hand. So you have to keep a track of all existing, of existing touches in order to build something, build an application that do something. Up. So this can be painless. Uh, you, may, you may want to use a gesture detector. Gesture detector allows you to uh, detect some events. Uh, we only pass the event that is the parameter of untouched event to the gesture detector. And the gesture detector will detect that this is a fling, this is a swipe, and so on. OK? And the gesture detector listener has few methods to implement. On done, to detect a single touch. On show press, to detect uh, a, a touch not yet cancelled. On single tap, on double tap, on long press, or on fling. On fling allows to detect uh, dynamic move. And for instance, if you want to, to implement the swipe, you just have to define this few lines of code. So you define a swipe minimum distance uh, and a swipe threshold velocity, velocity. And you ju just then compute the difference between the x of the previous touch and the x of the second touch, and so on, and the velocity to detect this is a swipe or not. So this is for simple uh, gesture. You may want to uh, target a scaling effect. And in this case, you have to implement the scale gesture uh, detector uh, that works similarly to gesture detector, but for scaling. Uh, and you have to implement the interface uh, uh, on scale gesture listener and to implement the method on scale, on scale binging, on scale, and, and so on. Uh, there is a default listener if you want to, to only uh, have to redefine uh, the necessary methods. Uh, the same way, if you want to capture double tap, you, you can just implement on double tap gesture listener and so on. So to sum up, uh, it's easy to detect single touches. Uh, you just have to implement untouch event. If you want to detect a multi-touch, you also have to, to implement untouch event, but you have to manage it by hand. Uh, you can also use uh, um, frameworks to detect more, com more sophisticated uh, uh, events. Uh, and you also learn in this video how to, uh, to build a component and to provide it through the editor uh, to the user. <laughs>